My name is Brenda, and welcome to Horrifying History, where you will hear about the unexplained, paranormal, and supernatural happenings that have stained the pages of history. They sit in cemeteries amongst the tombstones. They look innocent enough, an ornate chair or bench where you can rest your feet for a moment. But if there's a hint of truth to this urban legend, these objects wait for unsuspecting mourners to take a seat. Welcome to bonus episode 35, Devil Chairs. I love walking through cemeteries, especially the older ones. For me, it is a place of beauty and solitude. As I wander through the headstones, I often look at the monuments and the carvings on them and think of the people who lie there in internal rest. Sometimes I happen upon a stone chair or a bench and I sit for a moment. And while there, I always admire these chairs as a piece of art. Most are carved in elaborate styles that bring in elements of the outdoors or Gothic art. Sometimes they even have names of the deceased on them, but for many, these decorated items are just as creepy as the masses of tombstones that surround them. But perhaps there's a reason why people get a spooky vibe from these objects. Now known as devil chairs, haunted chairs, or witch chairs, these items are the source of some very interesting urban legends. It is believed that those who sit on these chairs will hear the dead and they can see the devil. But with this comes a cost. It is believed that if you choose to sit in these chairs, you are inviting misfortune and tragedy into your own life. You also can gain your every desire, but at the cost of exchanging a favor for your very soul. So why would these chairs be put in a cemetery if they have such an evil purpose? Well, that's because these chairs weren't originally thought of as dark objects at all. Originally, these items were called mourning chairs, and their purpose was quite simple. They were installed so people would have a place to sit while visiting the grave of their loved ones. That is why they are often found beside a grave, for example, by the grave of a child. It allowed for mourners to spend an extended time at the gravesite of those who they lost. These chairs came into fashion during the 1800s, like many other funeral traditions concerning grave adornment had. As time passed, Mourning chairs started to fall out of fashion as people did not linger at a grave like they did in the past. Cemeteries then started to install less expensive park-style benches for those who needed a rest. As new generations started to visit these same cemeteries, they didn't know the history behind mourning chairs. Their gothic look started to feel sinister to some, and this is when the urban legend behind the chairs started. Stories started to be told about these chairs as being portals to hell, a communication tool to speak to the devil, or as a way to contact witches or ghosts. Now, according to the book Weird Illinois, that is part of the Weird U.S. series, they claim that the legend of devil chairs started in the mid-1800s in the Appalachian Mountains, which is a mountain range that runs from the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador to central Alabama in the United States. This book tells that every year there was a special night when, and I quote, a chair would rise from the ground in a graveyard, and anyone who sat in it could make a pact with the devil. If you do this, the devil will eventually steal your soul. Over the years, this legend has evolved. Depending on where you live, if you sit in one of these chairs, you could also die in the upcoming year, die before your birthday, or hear the screams of a woman or a child. But as this lore evolved with time, it became one for legend tripping. So what is legend tripping? It's an activity that has been used by those exploring a legend's credibility and shows the courage of those taking place in that activity that is supernatural in nature. For some, this entails more dark or destructive motives as those participating plan to vandalize or desecrate an area associated with the legend. Some examples of this can be anything from performing an alleged ritual in a supposed haunted house to sneaking into a cemetery on a dark moonlit night to sit in a devil's chair. So my spooky friends, it's time to hear the legends of some very famous devil chairs. But please, if you plan to do a little dark tourism and go see these objects, remember, be respectful to the area and those who are at rest there.
in the Lake Helen Casadega Cemetery in Casadega, Florida in the United States is a devil's chair that on first look may be disappointing. This is because unlike the other intricately carved chairs that we will be talking about today, this one is plain. It is a red brick bench seat that has been built into a red brick wall that surrounds two gravestones. The writing on those stones face the chair and commemorate two women with the last name of Thatcher, but covering this chair are pentagrams and words like Satan that has been scratched into it and into the wall it's attached to. The urban legend behind this chair is very well known. On every Halloween or on any Friday the 13th, people flock to this cemetery to sit in its devil's chair. Through the years, the attention has gotten so bad that both police and residents take turns guarding this graveyard on these nights, arresting or turning back all that come. Why? Well, it's due to all the vandalism of this gravesite's tombstones and for the continued harassment of those who live nearby. So why are people so desperate to see this chair? Well, there are actually several legends attached to it. One of these claimed that if you leave a can of beer on the bench, that when you come back the next day, it will be drank. Now, you're likely thinking the same thing I am, that anybody can see a can of beer and drink it. But there is another twist to this story, my spooky friends. The beer will be missing, but the can will not have been opened. The next tale attached to this chair is the same as many others, that if you sit in this chair, you'll meet Satan himself. Apparently, he's quite the chatty little devil, since not only whatever he whispers to you will haunt you forever, but he also may appear to you at midnight in the days following your visit to the chair, no matter where you are. But I find the stories that the locals tell about this chair is much more interesting than the stories of the devil showing up. It starts in the year 1926, when an elderly man lost both his wife and daughter in a house fire. This poor man was devastated, and he had no other living relatives. This is why he had the bench built next to the graves of his daughter and his wife. He wanted to spend as much time as possible with the family he loved and he lost. He would go every day to sit for hours in that chair to gaze upon their names that he purposely put on the backside of the tombstone so he can see them from his bench. The locals started to think that he was crazy, and some of them started to mock him in his grief. Then, at about 11 p.m. one Halloween night, two local youths decided to sneak into the cemetery and do some Halloween night hijinks. As they entered, they saw the sad old man crying on his bench. The boys felt sad for him, and then they became concerned for his safety since it was now well into the night. They went to the local police to tell them that this man was there in the cemetery and that they were very concerned about him. After telling this tale, one of the police officers asked the boys if they were playing a prank. After all, the old man passed away a few short days before Halloween. Now our next chair is definitely more ordinate than our last one. It is beautifully sculpted and has the name of Baird chiseled right into it. The Devil's Chair is located at the Highland Park Cemetery in Kirksville, Missouri and has a very dark legend associated to it. Local legend warns all of those who are foolish enough to either sit in this chair at midnight or on specific dates like Halloween, apparently the first time you sit in this chair, you'll experience a string of horrible luck. If you're brave or stupid enough to try this twice, a curse will befall you. But if you're insane enough to try this for a third time, the bodies of the dead will rise. They will grab you and drag you with them to hell. But according to some other legends about this chair, you don't need to worry about zombie double minions. In some of the legends, they say if you sit on that chair, you will be rewarded for your courage. But here's the thing about this devil's chair. It isn't actually a chair, even though it has all the chair appearances and properties. It is actually a tombstone. John C. Baird was a stonemason and a businessman who sold funeral monuments with a partner named Mr. Grassle. Grassle was on a trip to Italy one time, and he saw a beautifully carved chair in some old ruins. He quickly made a sketch of it, and after he returned home, he made his own version of what he saw. He then made a few upgrades that matched the Victorian times, and when it was completed, he showed his work to John. John loved it, and the two decided to show the piece off in their showroom until John and his wife decided that this would be used for their own death monument, as it still is today. I can't help but wonder what John and his wife would think with the lore that developed around their eternal resting place and the fact that people think it's a location of a portal to hell. 
Now, as I told you all earlier, I love wandering through graveyards. The older, the better. And the Brookside Cemetery in Tecumseh, Michigan sounds like a place that I would love. It appears to have such a spooky atmosphere, and it's the resting place of many of the area's founding families. But if you were to walk to the backside of the cemetery, you would find the family plot of the Stacy family. And at that plot is a beautiful morning chair. The story behind this chair is actually quite simple. The Stacy family was quite wealthy. Mr. Stacy was a judge, and he and his wife Mary had several children together. After the judge died, Mary visited her husband's grave every day for 17 years. She would sit on that seat for hours to be closer to the man she loved. So how did this chair that saw so much love from a wife missing her husband become known as a witch's chair? Well, it actually has to do with the bigotry of the times. One of the Stacy's daughters never married. Her name was Loanna, and she was considered to be the town spinster. During these times, both widows and spinsters were resented in their communities as were people of disability. Many people believed that they must not be good people, and the reason for their disability or for being alone was due to their evil ways. These groups were often scapegoated for anything that would go wrong in their communities and were often accused of being witches that were causing misfortune. So as you can imagine, Loanna was labeled by her community as a witch. They had what they thought was pretty good reason. Firstly, she outlived her parents and the rest of her siblings, and that must have been because of witchcraft. Secondly, disease hit that area like it did for others in that time, and since Loanna was allegedly had witched, well, that was her fault too. Perhaps it was due to all these false rumors and the abuse that Loanna took because of it that her spirit is said to not be at rest. Local folklore tells that people see the spirit of either Loanna or Mary sitting on the witch's seat. People also claim to have seen the spirit of Loanna walking the halls of her family's own home. But what happens if somebody chooses to sit in the witch's chair? It is said that your bravery would be rewarded by you dying soon afterwards. In the Union Cemetery in Guthrie Center, Iowa, there is a devil's chair that stands out from all the others we spoke about today. It is said that if you have psychic abilities and you sit in that chair, you'll hear the dead talking to you. But with the good comes the bad. If you sit here, you'll have nothing but bad luck. Some of that luck comes in the form of Satan. He is said to appear in this chair every Friday the 13th and Friday the 17th at exactly 7 p.m. Some claim that if you're sitting on the chair at that time on those dates, Satan will grant you either magical or psychic powers. That is, if he likes you and think he can use you for something else. If not, you're out of luck in more ways than one. But here's the thing about this chair, my spooky friends. This cemetery was established on a private burial ground in 1885, but the lore about the devil's chair only goes back about 30 years. In 1885, the graveyard was laid out by a county surveyor. William and Margaret Hammond then made this area into a cemetery, which was then purchased by the city. There were already graves and the chair in the cemetery when it was purchased. There is no inscription on this chair, and it is thought that it is a memorial to either the Miller or Peterson families since the chair sits between their grave sites. So who started this tale? Why do they say that when you sit in that chair, you'll smell horrible strange smells, which means the devil's actually beside you? How did this tale even start, and why? That is something we may never know, but if you decide to take a seat in that chair, perhaps you can ask Satan that question. Thank you all for joining me for our latest episode of Horrifying History. Join us on Facebook at Horrifying History, on Instagram at Horrifying underscore History, on Twitter at Horrifying H-I-S-T-1, or reach out to us by email at HorrifyingHistory at Outlook.com and tell us your thoughts on Devil's Chairs. Do you think this is all made up, or could there be a kernel of truth in some of these legends? Now, if you haven't done it yet, please remember to hit the subscribe button for our podcast. For when you do, you let other people know about our show and you also download our next episode on its day of release. It's a great way not to miss our next episode, The Summer of 69. 
If you would love to take home a piece of horrifying history, you really should check out our store. You'll find great items by going to redbubble.com and by searching for horrifying history in their search box. And if you want to get a lot of great perks like ad-free episodes, free merchandise, additional content, and much, much more, we are now on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash horrifying history to sign up today. Thank you all for listening. And until next time.